Dear chess friends, welcome again to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm very excited to present you with practical solution against Sicilian neither for white. I would assume that many of you are aware that neither is probably the most popular opening on practically every level, maybe besides elite grandmasters who prefer in many cases e4, e5 to play solid since the draw result is quite good at this level for black. Now it goes without saying to learn neither for black requires a lot of effort, it's a massive theoretical line and it's very hard to play without theoretical knowledge. On the other hand, also white players in many cases face the di dilemma whether to play sidelines, which are pretty harmless, or to enter open Sicilian, which also requires very ser serious theoretical knowledge. Here I would like to show you one very interesting system, which lately has become very trendy. Now, after the initial moves e4, c5, knight f3, d6, d4, cd4, knight d4, knight f6, knight c3, a6, we arrive to the initial position of knight or variation. Now, white has a wide choice of options. Now, we have a super sharp bishop g5. Uh, there is English attack bishop e3, very popular move h3, of course more positional approach bishop e2, bishop c4, f4, and so on. However, in this video and on my side, I would like to offer you somewhat a practical solution, which in my opinion is way, way easier to learn to compare with the lines that I mentioned. It's six move bishop d3. It's remarkable how the theory of this variation has evolved throughout the times. Now, if I would encounter this move some 15-20 years ago, I would immediately probably think that the white player doesn't know the theory. So he or he prefers to avoid the main lines and this move is harmless and it's easy play for black. However, the, as I mentioned, the theory moves forward all the time and this move has become fashionable thanks to the efforts of two Russian elite grandmasters, Sergei Karyakin and Jan Nepomnish. Nowadays, the text is a fragment guest on grandmaster level. You can find the games of Nakamura, Vishwanathan Anand, Grishuk, and many other grandmasters. Now let's check what is happening here uh, from theoretical perspective. Black has a wide choice of different options here, like everything is possible. Now, I would like to mention uh, a couple of moves here. Now, first of all, uh, b5, well, a typical Sicilian move. Now, why not to play it right away? There is an obvious question. Obviously, black is looking for uh, not only b4 move to attack the knight, but somewhat a comfortable setup, maybe with bishop b7, knight d7. So here it's remarkable that there are almost 100 games, but I decided to come to, to analyze the move, which only happened once on practice. So I decided to come with like move knight d5. So that's my interesting idea here. So with the obvious point that after knight d5, which is ob objectively dubious, e d5, we get a favorable pawn structure where e7, pawn can become a potential target in long run. Now, of course, black has to respond in different way and, and there is a game which continued here e6. Uh, in this case, uh, black, uh, white captured on f6, queen f6. After trading this, those knights, white will play bishop e3, bishop e7, castle, knight d7. And now there is a question, where is white play? Actually, we can take advantage of b5 move, so we can even call it a little bit a premature advance, and attack this pawn, a4. So that's also somewhat a thematic idea. Now, b4 seems to be critical, at least this move 
happen in the game that I would like to mention. Of course, black can try to, to play before. Uh, in this case, white just continues with the normal development and it appears that in this position before pawn is hanging, uh, there is a threat of e5 and queen on f6 somewhat misplay misplaced. Now, after ba4, rook a4, black gets a tempo with knight c5, but a very strong move for rook b4, potentially targeting uh, bishop on b7 tactically, so it, there is already potential deflection ideas. Uh, I, I can think about something about knight e6, let's say, followed by bishop c5, and then bishop on b7 is hanging. So here, uh, in, the, in the only game, uh, bishop e4 happened, and white stroke with a very nice tactical uh, tactical blow here, knight takes e6, f6, bishop e4, knight e4, rook e4, played by grandmaster from Kazakhstan, who actually lives in the city where I was born, Rustam Husnudinov. So a brilliant game that white won, so it's, it's a great, uh, in my opinion, it's a great idea here. b5 and very interesting line to try. Now, Talking about other moves, of course, uh, there is a question about knight c6, what is happening after knight c6, since our knight on d4 a little bit vulnerable, not protected by the queen. So in this case, we capture on c6, a little bit unusual, because in most of the cases, this pawn structure transformation favorable for black, but here, a pawn on a6, I, I always kind of like skeptical about having this pawn on a6, seems like a waste of time, because this is the square which is should be uh should belongs to the bishop now and b3 very very unusual so we switch to positional mode here uh, just one example here how the play uh, might develop in this line g6 uh fianchetto castle bishop b2 bishop g7 castle castle very natural and now very important uh, very important move this is how white develops his play so knight a4 followed by c4 with definite positional pressure so i think this line again uh, quite promising for for white now let's uh, le let's scroll back so we we talked about b5 we talked about knight c6 now e6 very solid uh sicilian move uh black goes for scheveningen setup so not e5 but e6 something in the spirit of Gary Kasparov that he always uh, played, uh, handled this Sicilian neither of always with Shevening and set up in most of the cases. Now, here we continue at four. So it's always a little bit different. Uh, now one line we captured on C6 and another line we played 95. Now F4 finally. Here uh, I would like to mention that uh, there are a few tricks here. Now, if black decides to play b5, it's very dangerous because it allows e5 targeting knight on f6 right away with the following nice point. After d5, f5, there are two logical, two logical knight moves here. Now, knight d5 is the best. After knight d7, we have a very nice tactical resource, knight takes e7. It's actually a pretty thematic idea for Sicilian, knight a6. If uh, black captures uh, knight, the queen h5 idea uh, basically crushes with the king on e8. Now, knight d7 definitely a uh, mistake, so knight d5 is a better move. And now, in this position, queen g4 with a very interesting initiative. Very interesting initiative, uh, followed up by castle, obviously, and uh, the, the pawn on g7, not, not so clear how to solve the problem of uh, g7 pawn, because... Uh, white black cannot develop his knight right now so we talked about uh, we talked about b5 move right now now uh, another idea bishop e7 this is where uh, e5 works once again and once again it's very powerful now if black decides to go knight d7 uh, we capture on d6 bishop d6 and now we prepare a queenside castle bishop e3 actually a new move in this position nobody played before after castle, we play queen f3, nice square for the queen, queen c7, queenside castle, followed up by g4, looks very promising once again. Now, that was move knight fd7. If d5, fe5, <clears throat> again, two knight moves, it goes without saying that knight on d4 is untouchable because we have 
this discovery bishop b5 now knight d7 it's already we know the thematic tactical blow here knight e6 wins as well here with a very simple line here we give check queen h5 g6 obviously runs into bishop g6 uh, now meanwhile after king f8 we play castle and black forced to give up his piece but the position of his king obviously very very problematic after ef6 bishop f6 knight e4 white uh, white has decisive advantage so knight fd7 once again as in the previous line not working so we are talking about knight d5 the, there was one game here and once again the same scenario queen g4 is very strong thematic idea even though bishop on e7 now there is a dilemma here castle will run into bishop h6 g6 once again bishop h6 also it's weakening dark squares and here once again very very promising position for white knight bd7 probably the best move i would say in this position covering e5 square preventing e4 e5 in this case we play queen f3 <clears throat> good square for the queen it's very important to mention that now queen c7 is the best move but in case of b5 will have idea to play e4 e5 and the uh, uh, rook will be hanging on eight so therefore queen c7 and now g4 typical sicilian attacking move g4 and again very interesting position for white with good attacking chances now here we talked about e6 now let's talk about other moves <clears throat> of course g6 is well known uh, transformation into some kind of like dragon setup so it's maybe we can call it dragodorf there is this fancy name when you have g6 and a6 and seems like move bishop d3 is not exactly from uh very ambitious dragon lines for white where white usually castles queenside in this case we will continue f3 bishop g7 bishop e3 knight c6 queen d2 still preparing queenside castle castle kingside castle queenside and uh, it's a uh, interesting position of dragon a little bit unusual bishop on d3 on the other hand black also has this move a6 which is not exactly played in the regular dragon now as always uh, the, there is a choice for black one idea to play bishop d7 in this case we just start our uh, initiative on the king side g4 h4 h5 thematic for the dragon looks very promising i think this move d5 strike in the center usually usually the main line um in many situations when where it works where let's say white does not have bishop on c4 now in this case uh, we react with knight takes c6 bc6 bishop h6 very complicated game which covered in details in my file i think again white chances here slightly better now we talked about g6 and finally we have the main move uh the main move e5 in this position uh the move that usually played after bishop e2 bishop e3 so uh, well basically nowadays neither of players prefer this move to shaving and setup now after e5 knight goes to e2 so with potential uh to transfer this knight to g3 or to support f4 now the main line here bishop e7 in my file you'll uh, you'll find uh the alternative moves such as bishop e6 knight c6 but here i wanted to give you uh like the model game the model scenario how the the play can be developed here so we play castle castle and knight g3 keep an eye on the five square now one line will be knight c6 but well that's actually probably not the best move because in this case we jump right away knight d5 and obviously there is a problem that after knight d5 ed5 comes with the tempo and it's clearly very favorable for white now bishop e6 looks like a logical uh, logical move and we still play knight d5 so like a very clear idea here now uh it's not a pawn sacrifice so very important to mention this line after knight d5 ed5 bishop d5 we of course have 
the thematic tactical idea. Bishop h7, king h7, queen d5. So the material is equal, queen d7. The, there was a game here played in uh, <clears throat> 2020. Uh, Buxa against Zhao, so a, a very natural improvement here. Why not to start uh, with f4? After knight c6, we can play f5. Knight will come to e4, and it looks very dangerous uh, for black king. So it's, uh, it's a very promising initiative for white in this position. <clears throat> now, we talked about knight d5. Now, uh, in case of knight d7, we can support uh, knight on d5. There have been some games here. Overall, looks uh, like a positional edge for white. Uh, so this position uh, seems like very, very playable. I think the best solution for black, which has been played by many grandmasters here, is to take with the bishop. Uh, ed5, obviously not to take back, but rather uh, play uh, g6 in this position, covering f5 square. Of course, uh, the, probably the more or less the same scenario happening after knight d7. We'll just play c4, rook e8, bishop e3, rook to c1, and so on. So we'll see a similar position in the main line. Now, after g6, it's not only covering f5, but it prepares f7, f5 in the future. It's, it's good to take a tempo here, bishop h6, attacking the rook, rook e8, and then c4. So our play is on the queen side. We also prevent b5, obviously. So the play, the long-term idea is to try and, and develop the play on the queen side. Maybe c5 break. Uh, now, after knight d7, so here's an example here, knight d7, rook c1. Uh, we have a very, very complicated middle game where... I basically like white chances, uh, the, the bishop pair is here and, and the play is pretty clear. So whenever there is opportunity, we go before. Uh, also, if there is a chance, uh, it's always a good idea to activate light square bishop. So for instance, here uh, after a5, I found this new idea to go bishop c2, knight d7 and transfer the bishop to this diagonal where it's uh, well placed, uh, not only covering b5 square, but also controlling the rook on e8. So basically, uh, I that's more or less the, the structure of the material that I'm offering this. I think the guys that somebody who watched this video, he he already has the idea how, uh, how the lines are played here and can do his homework. If you are interested, but if you are interested, you have file which is already prepared and goes, dives into details. Uh, this file you can find on my personal webpage, uh, which is ask-avruch.com. You can download this file, you can buy this file. It's uh, It took me like a few days to, to build this repertoire. So it was a very serious work. I'm quite happy for this practical choice. And it seems like very playable line, which uh, becomes more and more trendy, but still, I believe, can be uh, somewhat a surprise weapon because it's not like top five, six choices for white. Uh, now, uh, most of you probably are aware that on my webpage, I actually have three different levels, uh, but I think it's not really a good fit for somebody with a, like range 1000 to 1500 unless he's very ambitious so it's still very complicated uh, I can tell this from my personal uh, coaching experience but uh, it's a good repertoire for club players for uh, title seekers and definitely all the way up I think uh, I think it's pretty strong repertoire now you probably you have noticed already I mentioned a few a few improvements a few powerful novelties and you'll definitely find much more in my file. Uh, so basically this file fits all the levels. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, like w whether it's club players, title seekers and all the way up. I, I believe it's it's a good fit even for the title players right now. Uh, very serious material. Uh, guys, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed the lecture. I hope you're interested in this uh, in this work and once again there is a possibility to buy this file on my webpage and the most important to benefit from this knowledge and to score a lot of wins thanks for your attention and i'm looking forward to see you again